2020 brings with it the start of not only a new year but a brand new decade. There is a whisper of better things to come and a hint of hope. However, for some, it just means another year and possibly another decade stuck with an unsolved mystery that keeps them from finding closure. See also, 10 truly bizarre and chilling cases of mass disappearances. Many have lost loved ones in inexplicable ways while others wait for word on missing family members that never comes. On this list are 10 disappearances to be debated and mulled over. But all the while, we should not forget those left behind who are praying for their missing loved ones to return unharmed. Number 10. Boris Weisweiler 43-year-old Boris Weisweiler had just about had it with all the snow in Pennsylvania in December 1984. Craving sunshine, he booked a trip to Chile and was looking forward to hiking several trails in the Andes Mountains. It is believed that Weisweiler tried to cross a river at one point during a hike. The only sign that he was ever there was a backpack found on the river bank. Weisweiler never returned home and was never seen again. Authorities in Chile concluded that he had drowned while trying to cross the river, but his body was never recovered. Fast forward 16 years, and Boris Weisweiler's mysterious disappearance takes a sinister turn. Declassified U.S. documents reveal that the Penn State University professor may have been murdered in Chile. The documents allege that a witness saw Weisweiler being interrogated at an agricultural commune before being shot point-blank. This revelation led to a new investigation. In 2012, eight men, including police and military officers, were charged with the kidnapping of Weisweiler. However, the case was closed in 2016 and the men were all freed. Boris Weisweiler's sister was devastated at this turn of events. To date, a body has not been recovered in Chile and Boris Weisweiler's ultimate fate remains a mystery. On April 20, 1989, 37-year-old Patricia Mihan was driving on the wrong side of the road on Montana Highway 200 when she crashed into another vehicle. The driver of the other car was Carol Heights, an off-duty police dispatcher. After Heights exited her car, Meehan walked up to Heights and stared silently at her. After a few seconds, Meehan turned around, climbed over a nearby fence, stared again at the scene, and then walked away. She was never heard from again. After the incident, thousands of sightings of Meehan were reported, she was either hitching rides or having low-key meals at diners. These sightings all allegedly took place in the states of Montana and Washington. It was revealed that Meehan had suffered from depression and worked odd jobs at a ranch in Montana before her disappearance. In conjunction with police efforts, Min's family launched a personal search for Patricia. The family distributed 2,000 missing person flyers and made use of horses and a helicopter to search rough terrain. Despite this huge effort, Patricia Meehan remains missing. Number 8 Mayumi Arashi 27-year-old Mayumi Arashi left her home in Tokyo on September 2, 1994, after telling her sister, Yoko, that she was going out to meet a friend. When Mayumi failed to return by September 3, Yoko phoned that friend to find out where her sister was. The friend said that she hadn't had plans to meet Mayumi the previous day. Later the same day, a note was found in Yoko's wardrobe. The note read, I was going out with the but was betrayed. Opening square bracket dot, 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 I'm sorry. A's phone number was written at the bottom of the note. Yoko dialed the number and spoke with A. He said that he had met with Mayumi the previous day. If Mayumi was dead, he hoped that the punishment would be prison. Yoko got hold of a private detective who tracked the movements of A for months. But the detective could only come back with the information that A had gone into the woods on March 9, 1995, carrying two drinks. A police investigation of the area turned up nothing. Years went by with no news of Mayumi. Yoko and her father eventually did a TV interview about Mayumi's disappearance. 
On a shelf behind the father was a piece of paper stuck to the wood that read, Don't believe what Yoko says. This sent viewers into a frenzy. But despite this weird turn of events, Mayumi Arashi remains missing. There are no new clues as to what may have happened. It is not often that you hear of a person disappearing multiple times. However, this is exactly the case with Hannah Up. She disappeared for the first time on August 28, 2008, after going for a jog on Riverside Drive near Hamilton Heights where she lived. Nearly three weeks later, she was found floating in New York Harbor. She could not recall how she got to the harbor or what happened in the weeks she had been missing. While undergoing tests in a hospital, Up was diagnosed with dissociative fugue, which is a rare form of amnesia. This disorder causes sufferers to forget their own identities and can last for years. Up disappeared again for two days in September 2013 and then again on September 14, 2017, a week after Hurricane Irma hit the Caribbean. She was working at a school in the Virgin Islands at the time. On September 16, 2017, construction workers found her car at a beach. The vehicle contained clothes and her keys. The same day, Hurricane Maria was forming in the Atlantic and brought more devastation across the northeastern Caribbean. Unfortunately, Hannah wasn't found and remains missing to this day. Number 6 Patrick Warren and David Spencer after celebrating a great Christmas day with their families in 1996, best friends Patrick Warren 11, and David Spencer 13, spent Boxing Day lazing about in their homes in Chelmsley Wood. In the afternoon, they played with a group of children in Meriden Park. When the two boys finally returned home, they asked their parents if they could visit one of Patrick's brothers that evening. Patrick set off on the new bicycle he had received for Christmas, and David walked beside him. They made it as far as the local gas station where an attendant saw them head toward a shopping center. The next day, another of Patrick's brothers went looking for the boys when it was learned that they had never arrived at their destination the previous day. Much later, Patrick's bicycle was found behind the gas station. The boys' faces were plastered on milk cartons in an effort to find them. It was only in 2003 that a suspect was arrested. However, the man was released without being charged. Child killer Brian Field was also a suspect because he had killed and raped a child in 1968 and imprisoned two teens in 1986. In 2006, the area where Field used to dump waste was searched in the hopes that the remains of the boys would be found. The search was unsuccessful. Patrick and David remain missing in early 2020. There is little hope that the case will ever be solved. <laughs>